Thank you very much for joining us once again today. We are very happy to always host you. And we know that you are learning new things. You're getting to grow as a Christian. And even in spite of everything that is going on, you are becoming stronger. So we welcome you again to this service. It is a special service. I am looking forward to it and I know you are too. So please join us as we go into a time of worship after which we welcome our pastor, Pastor Sholama Bogunje. God bless you. Hallelujah. Father, we bless your name this morning. You are worthy. You are worthy to be praised. We give you all the glory, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh my soul. Worship his hope. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul.
rain on high, on the land. We worship you, Jesus, this morning. There is no like you. You are beautiful. service. I trust that you had a good week and I know that um, God has been with you. Um, today we're going to be treating a very important topic and that is financial stewardship. It's um, a topic that is particularly relevant for the harsh economic environment, this pandemic has brought into our country and all over the world. Um, you know, during this period of time, we've heard a lot of speculations. We've heard a lot of um, um, opinions of how things are going to be after the pandemic. Um, but you know, the thing about most of these opinions is that they are opinions, they are speculations. I think what makes sense is to take time to listen to the one who knows the end from the beginning. Um, and you know, now is the time to begin to listen if we have not already started to what God is saying at this time. Um, you know, one of the things that um, we are assured of is that no matter what happens, heaven and earth may pass away but God's word will always come to pass. And, you know, when we look at Psalm 37, um, verse 19, God has something to say about seasons like this. Um, Psalm 37, verse 19, reading it in the Good News translation says, they will not suffer when times are bad. That's what God said. They, that is his people, when we put our trust in him and we rely on him, God assures us that we will not suffer when times are bad and we will have enough in a time of famine. Hallelujah. And so to do justice to our topic today, um, we have with us today a man uh, I respect a lot. Um, he's someone who loves God and believe me, he's a shepherd at heart. He is the lead pastor of the Elevation Church, one of the fastest growing churches in Nigeria with branches in different parts of Lagos and outside the country. Um, and he is somebody that I would say clearly is a prolific teacher and an anointed teacher of the word of God. So I know that he's going to bless us today. And so with Jesus' joy, let us welcome to the Saint of Christ Church, Pastor Godman Akinlabi, as he brings us God's message on financial stewardship. Hallelujah. Good morning, saints of God. Good morning uh, from wherever you're joining this service from. I, I want to appreciate you for coming along to be 
a part of this service. And I want to also especially appreciate uh, Pastor Shola and Simi Mabogunje for having me uh, bring God's word to you this wonderful Sunday morning. Um, well, I understand that we've been teaching on financial stewardship and uh, the message that I brought this morning, I, I just uh, believe that this is what God has put in my heart to share with you. And I, I pray that God will give you the grace to receive it and uh, that it will bring forth fruit in your life in the precious name of Jesus. Please let's share a word of prayer together. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to bring your word to your, uh, your, your sons and daughters at the Saints of Christ Church. Uh, we, we pray that as we minister your word today, let grace rest upon it. Uh, that it will be a blessing to everyone that will partake of it. Holy Spirit, this is your moment. Have your way. Do that which is your good will. Let this word bless and transform lives. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Again, I want to say a big thank you to Pastor Shola and Semima Bogunje and the entire Saints of Christ Church for having me uh, minister the word of God to you this morning. I'm speaking on what I've titled, Fear God, Not Poverty. Uh, I've been instructed to teach something on financial stewardship, and this is what God has just put in my heart to share with you this uh, great Sunday morning. Fear God, not poverty. I want you to look at your neighbor if you're at home, whatever you may be in the office, look at somebody beside you and tell them, fear God, not poverty. I want to read uh, um, a passage of the scripture from Matthew 19. Uh, we read from verse 16 of Matthew 19. It's a popular story. We call, uh, we, we, we call the story of the rich young ruler. Uh, Jesus admonishing the, the rich young ruler. Matthew uh, 19 from verse 16. The Bible says, Now behold, one came and said to him, Good teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? I'm reading from New, New King James Version. It said, Good teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? So he said to him, Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good uh, but one, that is God. But if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. And he said to him, Which one? And Jesus said, You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, honor your father and your mother, and, uh, you, uh, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Uh, the, the young man said to him, All these things I have kept from my youth. What do I still lack? Verse 21, very instructive. Jesus said to him, If you want to be perfect, go sell what you have and give to the poor, and you shall have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. Look at verse 22, lastly. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. I love the way uh, uh, someone once put this, that he went away sorrowful because great possession had him. Held him back from entering into eternal life. Many people in our world today live their lives in such a way that the fear, the fear of poverty is what is ruling their lives. The fear of being without money. The fear of being without means. And then that leads them to mismanage what God has given them. Leads them to mismanage their relationship with God. It, this is what we saw in the life of this rich young ruler. He already had money. But the fear of losing all that he had held him back from doing the will of God at that material point in time. So Jesus told him, if you, if you truly, truly want to fulfill your heart desire to, 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 to get into eternal life with God or to experience the life of God, this is what you need to do. Break the old of fear of poverty over your life. And then you will enjoy fully. Just like Jesus said in John 10, 10, I have come that you may have life and have it in abundance. In overflow measure, you will enjoy overflow measure of the life of God if uh, the love of money or the fear of poverty, as the case may be, will not be the things ruling your life. Anyone who has lost the fear of poverty, who, has, who, who does not have love for money, the desire for money is different from love for money. When you love something, you are willing to lay down your life for it. 
So some people are willing to lay down their lives for money. That, that's why the scripture says the love of money, not money, the love of money is the root of all evil. The, the, the love of money is the root of all evil. Uh, and and the, the one uh, palliative or healing that Jesus spoke about for poverty is the gospel. And the gospel opens us up to the love of God as in Christ Jesus. It's possible for somebody to fear poverty and not fear God. Or fear poverty so much that you're willing to do a lot more. A lot to secure your place in terms of wealth, in terms of always having money, to the point that you lose your place in the kingdom of God or you lose your place in the hereafter. Because that was what happened to the, young, uh, the rich young ruler. Now, somebody may be asking, uh, what's, what's poverty? Uh, poverty is a state of being extremely poor. That's the ordinary definition. Uh, the United Nations has different grades of poverty, and I, I don't want to get, get into that today. But poverty is a, state of, uh, uh, is a state of being extremely poor, the state of being inferior in quality or insufficient in amount. So when we have the, the mindset that something is not enough, it, it starts to breed poverty mindset. And poverty manifests itself in different ways. We have poverty of the pocket. Uh, when, uh, you know, that's the inability to provide for one's need or want. And then you also have poverty of the spirit, which is being shut out of the promise of eternal life. Yeah. Being shut out from the, the promise of eternal life. Then the, there's poverty of the mind. Having poor ideals or a poor measure of self, which is what we call low self-esteem. Low self-esteem will yield poverty of the mind where you think that you don't deserve certain level of goodness in life. It's low self-esteem that brings people into the point where they, they, they just feel that they, they're not supposed to enjoy certain things. They're not supposed to attain to certain things. Uh, it's poverty of the mind that brings people to that, that point. So regardless of how it is manifest, or how it is, uh, poverty is manifesting in your life or my life right now, nobody wants to be poor. Everybody is always running away from poverty. People run from poverty by any means necessary, any means possible. The reason why some people will leave certain countries to go to another country, certain city to another city, one job to the other, a lot of the time is because we want our needs met. And if you want to be good stewards of the financial resources and other resources that God will give us, we must understand first and foremost that the, the, uh, 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 what determines how we live our life should not be the resource it is the giver of the resource. Because if I am a steward, I understand that I'm not the owner. I'm holding it in trust. So God gives us resources. He is the giver. He is the source. Your boss is a channel. Your business is just a channel. The Bible says God will bless you, you, you know, your storehouse. It will bless your kneading bowl uh, and all that. In the book of Deuteronomy 28, he was talking about you know, the different kinds of blessing. The blessing... Of, of your storehouse, the blessing of your needing board, the bless it talks about the blessing that comes upon our investment, blessing that comes upon the work of our hand, blessing that comes upon, you know, all those different channels are, are just channels through which it flows. God himself is the source. And a lot of the time we lose sight of the fact that God is the source. We focus on the channel. That's why your boss can tell you to do something contrary to the will of God, but because you know he's the one that will sign your paycheck, you will obey your boss and dis disobey God. Because you are afraid of poverty to the point that you are willing to disobey God. And that's why I'm bringing this message this morning, that it's time for us, especially in this season that we're living in, where our world is changing rapidly. The only person that has the key uh, to the, our future, the one you know, who, who, who determines, who says my counsel shall stand and I will do my good pleasure. The one who determines the, the flow of things in our world today. The one who, 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 who by the word of his power, he framed the world together. He's still in charge today. He's still in control of all that is going on in our world today. And we need to understand that he has our future in his hands. And that's the one that we need to respond to this season. That's the one that we need to get into deeper levels with this season. That's the one that we need to say yes, sir, to this season. Not uh, the fear of poverty or fear of not enough or fear of the future. 
Uh, because that's what is driving many people's decision in our world today. But it's time for you and I to focus on what matters the most, and which is our relationship with God. God is the one who allots our portion. He's the one uh, that is in charge of time and chance. The Bible says the race is not to the swift. Uh, the battle is not to the strong. Men of uh, wisdom will not always win, but the Bible says time and chance happen to them. And there's one person that is in charge of time and chance, and that is God. That's God. He's the one that makes time and chance happen to everyone. And if I know him and I have a relationship with him, then I know time and chance can happen to me every day because of the covenant that I have with him. So if I honor the covenant, if I respect that God, then uh, I, I, will, uh, I will just be positioning, I will not be hustling. Many people today love to say, oh, we're hustling. We're trying to make ends meet. The destiny of a believer is not in hustling. It's in divine positioning. His goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. Not you chasing goodness and mercy, including money. You, God will say, this is where I want it to be. And you say, yes, sir, because we fear God more than poverty that is chasing people all over the place. You can stay in one place and the blessing of God, the grace of God, the favor of God, the hand of God reaches you where you are. That has been my experience. And I'm sharing with us from my experience this morning that this is what God, this is how God wants us to respond to what is going on in our world today if we will be good steward of his grace indeed. So the fear of poverty will, uh, always will cause people to dishonor the covenant and not to release their, their, their seed. Especially in, in this season when people are saying uh, there's not enough in our world to go around to everybody. The fear of poverty will cause people to dishonor the covenant, like not giving to God, like not helping the poor. The Bible says, he that gives to the poor, lend to the Lord, and the Lord will repay him back. The Bible says, honor the Lord with your substance and the first fruit of all of your increase. Uh, when we stop honoring God, we are dishonoring the covenant that we have with him. And it's, it's the fear of poverty that leads to that. And the Bible says in Proverbs 11 and verse 24, it said that it's he that scatters and yet increases. There is either we're told more than is necessary and it tends to poverty. I love the message Bible rendition of that. He said the word of the generous gets larger and larger and the word of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. I, I'll read that one more time just because I wanted to sink in. He said the word of the generous gets larger and larger. The word of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. The moment we start to dishonor God by refusing to release our seed towards him, uh, we get into the camp of the world of the stingy that gets smaller and smaller. Another thing that people do because of the fear of poverty is that they cheat for personal gain. They cheat for personal gain. Anyone that would cheat for personal gain is afraid of poverty, not God. Because they, they, they want increase without honoring God, who is the God of increase. They want to be the architect of their own increase by cheating other people, taking what doesn't belong to them. Another thing that people do when they're afraid of poverty is that they compromise their faith. They compromise their faith. They do unthinkable things that a believer should not do. Just whether they want to preserve themselves or something like that. You remember what happened in Matthew 22 when Jesus was telling uh, uh, Peter, uh, he, he said, I prayed for you that your faith will not fail. Uh, because Jesus knew that Peter's faith was going to fail at that point, was going to compromise his faith just because of fear of, you know, of, 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 of him losing his life. Because he, he knew that if they knew that Jesus was, uh, uh, how do I put it, Jesus, uh, uh, he was part, one of the disciples of Christ, there's a possibility that they may carry him and crucify him with Christ. So he wanted to save his own life and he had to lie three times and compromise his faith. Jesus said, uh, it's a case of cast down but not destroyed, though you, 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 you would deny me three times, but I prayed for you because what the enemy had in mind for you is bigger than that. It's bigger than that. He wants to destroy your faith and alienate you from my kingdom. But I prayed for you that your faith will not fail. I pray for somebody today that your faith will not fail in the name of the Lord Jesus. So people do these three things when uh, the fear of poverty is driving them. They dishonor the covenant, they cheat for, for personal gain and uh, compromise their faith. So, uh, but one thing that will help us not, I mean, not to get into that zone as good stewards of what God has given us is 
uh, that we need to understand that if God himself is the one that gives power to get wealth, then why fear a spirit? Uh, why fear the, the, the spirit of poverty that can only steal from you uh, when you permit it, when you permit it to do so? Why don't you just uh, release all your, your, your fear, your, your adoration, your, your, you know, everything to God who is the giver, who is the supplier, who is the one uh, that, that, that can perfect all that concerns me, meet me at every point of need, is the one that gives power to get wealth, according to Deuteronomy 8 and verse 18. The Bible says, the Lord our God who gives us power to get wealth. When, when I walk in reverential fear of him, when I walk you know, in open, uh, heart, with my, my heart open towards him, I get more of that power, more of that power. To, to, you know, to, to, to build wealth because that, that's, that's the value of the covenant that we have with God. That power is made available for us to build wealth, to multiply wealth. All right. Uh, as I start to tie this all together, I want to talk about slaying the spirit of poverty. Slaying the spirit of poverty and have one or two encouragements here for us on how do we slay the spirit of poverty. Glory be to Jesus. I want you to look at your neighbor for me, anyone that's watching this with you, and tell them it's time to live free of the fear of poverty so that you can be a good steward. Glory be to Jesus. Slaying the spirit of poverty. One, it's time to overcome indebtedness. Overcome indebtedness. You want to slay the spirit of poverty, you need to overcome indebtedness. Debtors don't have seeds. And without seed, there cannot be, I mean, there cannot be any harvest. Seed is what leads to harvest. Seed is what leads to a harvest. Seed is what leads to a harvest. And the Bible says in uh, Isaiah 55, I think around verse 10, the Bible says it's the God who gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Psalm 126, it says, it, it said, either goeth forth, weeping and bearing precious seed, it would doubtless return carrying his sheaths with him. He will return with his harvest. If he can go forth, even though it may be painful sometimes, to cut down my excesses so that I can have seed to sow, so that I can be a blessing to other people, I, uh, it's painful sometimes to reduce uh, my proclivities for, to, for uh, I mean, to meet the needs of my flesh, things I can do away with, separating my needs from my wants. Needs are, are essential. Well, those are the things that I need to survive. Wants are additional things that we crave for. And sometimes uh, we spend more of the resources that God has given us on wants uh, to the point that even God is not proud of us on how we allocate our resources. Uh, time will not permit me to get into all that today. But I need somebody to understand uh, that you, if you want to come, I mean, clean and free of poverty, of, of the fear of poverty, and you want to be a good steward, you must walk your way out of indebtedness. One thing that indebtedness uh, will do to you is that it will rob you of seeds. Let me explain what I mean. So you earn a salary, but you have money. You have spent beyond your means at certain time. So you are still paying for that now. You can imagine somebody gets 100,000 naira or, 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 or any other currency or, or, or for that matter, and you are already owing <laughs> uh, maybe equivalent of 70 or 80 or even 50% of that. By the time you had the cost to run your life for the next month to it, uh, and you want to pay what you are owing, you just realize that you're already in deficit. And if you schedule yourself to, to pay it over a period of time and make up your mind that you're going to go clean from indebtedness. If you're, if you're watching this and you're watching from, you know, in, in, from the Western world where you, you have to use your credit card, me, using credit card does not mean that you always have to be indebted. You can still live within your means. You can purchase things in, of credit using your credit card, but you know you have the financial muscle to be able to take care of it. Not that you're just swiping the card all over the place uh, thinking that uh, 
uh, one day I'm going to pay, and then the thing multiplies. Or people in, in, in the developing countries who will just go ar around uh, mid-month, you've collected uh, uh, one advance payment from this person, you've asked your office to advance you some money, you look for a, a bank or microfinance bank that can advance you money again for something else, and before you know it, you're carrying, you know, a load of indebtedness from two, three sources. You've collected money from family members, church member. Some people even want to borrow money from their pastor. Yeah. The pastor is supposed to teach you the word of God, not to borrow you money. Except this is for your business or to enhance what you do. Yeah. That's what I mean. Anybody that will consistently borrow to feed the needs of your flesh, buying clothes, buying things that you may not necessarily need, or just some things with which you show off, people will, some people will, will behave so badly, you borrow money to buy a phone. When you know your size, when it comes to that phone, and you are supposed to leave your size per time. Life is in faces, men are in sizes. If you drive a car that you cannot afford, that you're, if you, even if they give you opportunity to spread the payment, you know it's outside of the bandwidth of your salary or your income. You're already living beyond your means. It leads to indebtedness. There's a difference between faith, foolishness, and presumption. That I'm believing God does not mean I should go uh, outside of the means that God has given me to overextend myself, to get a, a debt burden. Because somebody may be asking the question, so where is the place of faith here? <laughs> uh, let me describe it this way. Uh, you know, if you write a positive check to somebody and you write it by faith and you put a date there, you should release your faith for the money to enter your account before that date and you should be able to point to one, two, three or four sources where the money is going to come from. In fact, the ideal behavior is for you not to write a check until your faith has produced. Let your faith produce first and then write the check because a dull check is a criminal offense. So <laughs> I'm sure all of us are aware of that and we need to understand that. I, I, I don't want to overflog that, but there's a need for you to stay out of indebt 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 indebtedness. Gain wisdom for financial planning. Don't live from paycheck to paycheck. There's a seed in every harvest. There's a seed in every harvest. The Bible says God gives uh, bread to the eater and seed to the sower. Every harvest that God brings to you must not go servicing debt to the point that some people cannot even give God tithe or offering just because they are holding too much. And by the time they get whatever harvest God is bringing to them, whether through salary or through payment for work they, they've done, the money has already gone. And that's, that's a bad place to be. If you live like that, you continually be uh, in that zone of fair poverty. Uh, quickly, secondly, Position yourself as a seed carrier. As a seed carrier. Just like I, I read from Isaiah 55, uh, verse 10 earlier on, quoted from there earlier on. Uh, there's, there's a seed that God has given you. So distinguish your bread from your seed. You know, uh, um, when you, uh, you, you must not eat your seed. And God doesn't also want you to sow your bread, except you have express instruction. The bread is your means of sustenance. As a man, I know I have responsibility for my family, to take care of my family. Uh, so I, God is not expecting me to sow my children's school fees. Yeah. That is bread to the eater. He wants food on the table in my house so that I can represent God in my home where? So that my children will know that God is a good God when they have good food to eat. So there's bread to the eater and seed to the sower. And uh, we, 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 we must position ourselves as seed carriers and preserve our seed and not eat it. Eating uh, seed is a tragic waste of potential because when you eat a seed, a seed has serious potential. It can become a tree that can become a forest. But when you eat it, it is gone. Whatever God expects you uh, to lay down as a seed uh, must not be found in your mouth or in your belly, as the case may be. It must be found where the seed is supposed to be planted. Uh, you can imagine in, in, the, in the story of uh, 
uh, feeding 5,000, if the person who was supposed to give five loaves and two fish had eaten it, that miracle would not have happened. And God is always expecting us to have something in our hands that he can bless and that he can multiply. Glory be to Jesus. So don't sow your bread and don't eat your seed. That's my admonition there. Don't sow your bread, don't eat your seed. You need to be able to identify the two if you want to be a good steward of the manifold you know, grace of God and the resources that God will give you. Number three, deal with the not enough mindset. Deal with the not, not enough mindset. God is called El Shaddai, one of his names. The big-breasted one, the nourisher of the universe. The one that is more than enough. The one that is more than enough. It, it takes little uh, and, and, and makes it big. That's, 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 that's what our God does. So never we told more than his meat so that it doesn't turn to poverty in your hand. There is seed that scatters and yet increase. There is seed that we told more than, more than is necessary and it, it, it becomes, uh, it turns to poverty. So deal with the not enough mindset. It's very important. I'd love to read a scripture there also just to, 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 to buttress my point. Um, John 6 from verse 4 down to 9. In John 6 from verse 4 down to 9, Jesus was about to, uh, uh, you know, perform a miracle. The miracle of feeding uh, the, 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 the 5,000. And in verse 4 of John chapter 6, the Bible says, Now the Passover, of the, uh, of the, the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was near. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes and seeing a great multitude coming toward him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread that this may eat? But this is said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Look at the next verse. Philip answered and said, 200 denarii worth of bread is not enough for them, that every one of them may have a little. A little. Jesus was not thinking about a little. But Philip's mindset is a little mindset. Little. One of the disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many? All of them were thinking not enough. Were thinking little. But when you read further there, you see that by the time they got what the lad had, and Jesus blessed it, the thing multiplied in the hand of the, uh, of the disciples, they fed everybody head very well, not a little, to the point that they, they, they gathered 12 baskets of, rem, uh, 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 you know, of, of food that was remaining. So that's what God had in mind. He wanted to feed them to, over, to, 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 to overflowing measure, in overflowing measure. But the disciples were thinking little by little. Uh, and Andrew, I mean, Philip said 200 in a right word when, when I did a study on this. Uh, uh, a while ago, and he realized that what he was talking about was the, 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 like the wage of the average uh, worker of that day, like uh, uh, some, something like a below uh, middle class worker of that day. That was the wage, like an annual salary or monthly salary. And this guy said, even if I get my whole salary and bring it to this crusade ground and give it, and give it here, Jesus, it will still not be enough. The highest money I've earned in my life will still not be enough. Most people dimension God based on their last salary or their last income. God is bigger than your income. He's bigger than the evaluation of your company. He's bigger than, uh, you know, your annual salary. God is bigger than that. And when you reduce God to that, you will not be able to aspire. You will, uh, when, when, when you will not position as a good steward. And when you're supposed to give, you will not be able to give. You'll not be able to give because you're always thinking, this is what is coming next. So I need to package myself within this means. But if you know that if I release back to God, God is able to multiply what is coming to me so that it, there may even be more than I can imagine. And that, that's what guides the mind of anyone who wants to uh, come free, of, of, who, who wants to slay the spirit of poverty. Glory be to Jesus. Number four and the last one is... Overcome the fear of, uh, of poverty. Overcome the fear of poverty. Uh, giving does not diminish what you have. It's an investment in your future. Giving does not diminish what I have. It's an investment 
in my future. It's an investment in my future. It's an investment in my future. So slaying the spirit of poverty, I've said, overcome indebtedness, position yourself as a seed carrier because God gives uh, seed to the sower and bread to the eater and you must always move around thinking, uh, uh, I mean, behaving like a seed carrier, not asking the question, uh, what does my world have for me, but always saying, what do I have for my world? That's how we release our potentials. What can I, uh, how can I impact my world? What do I have for my world? What can I give? Some people are always, you know, need conscious, not seed conscious. They're always thinking of what to get and not what to give. You, if you want to slay the spirit of poverty, you have to be seed conscious, not need conscious. And you have to always tell yourself that I have something. I have something. So that's, that's number three there. And uh, uh, no, no, Sorry, number two, position yourself as a seed carrier. And then number three, I said deal with the not enough mindset. The not enough mindset will cause you uh, to always hurt things, cause you not to aspire. And then number four, overcome the fear of poverty. In uh, the scripture we started with in Matthew 19 from verse 16, the rich young ruler went away sorrowful because what he, he, he was not willing to lose what he had. He loved his possession more than he loved God. He really wanted to serve God. That was why he went to Jesus. But uh, the fear of losing what he had was stronger than the desire that he had to follow God and to love God. That's why I said today, one of the greatest prayers you can pray this season is to pray, Lord, help me to fear you and not poverty. Because when you fear poverty, you will behave wrongly towards money, towards resources. You will cheat. You may, may be willing to go to any length to get money. But when you fear God, goodness and mercy runs after you. They run after you. Goodness and mercy will run after you. No, and, and you will not have to be running elter skelter. You just need to be diligent with your work. Because the Bible says, if you see a man that's diligent in his business, he will stand before kings and not mere men. So uh, uh, giving doesn't diminish you. It's an investment in your future. So it, it will yield great returns. So don't lay up your treasure only here on earth. The world system is unstable, and we can see it during this COVID-19 pandemic period that the world system is always going up and down. It's a cycle. It's a cycle. Whatever you leave, you know, to God will always multiply and be sent back to you. But when, you, uh, when everything that you have is kept here, when the cycle of this world comes, it can wipe out everything that you have. But when, when you bring God into your life, when you know that it's your source, that all the businesses and jobs, everything, they're just channels. God is the source. When we focus on the source and make up our mind that we want to be good steward, good steward, a good steward of uh, God's gift, then our focus is on God, not whether we have or we don't have. Paul said, I've learned to abound and to be abased. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. And can you say that? Because anyone that will say that, you know, we say, I can do all things through Christ. I can do all things through, through Christ. Uh, you know, quoting from, the, uh, for, from Philippians there. But the truth is, can you really do it when it comes to resources? When you are out of money and material possession, do you still believe that God is on your side? Or is that the point where you think that God has forsaken you to the point that you take everything into your own hands and you want to help yourself by all means. I pray for you today that the God of heaven will open your eyes to see the things that God is working uh, on for you. The things that God is working around the clock to bring into your life. God of heaven will open your eyes to see it in the name of Jesus. According to Ecclesiastes chapter 2 and verse 26, the Bible says, For God gives wisdom and knowledge and joy to a man who is good in his sight, but to the sinner he gives work of gathering and collecting, that he may give to him who is good before him. This also is vanity and grasping for the wind. God is the one in charge of allocation. 
Scripture says here in Ecclesiastes 2 and 26, God will take from this and give to this. And we need to understand that, that if I focus my attention on him this season, spending time with God, loving him the more, gaining revelation knowledge, meditating on God's word, like I've been telling them in our church, uh, it's possible for, uh, for somebody to be in the fear zone as, you know, this pandemic started. But if after four weeks, eight weeks, you are still in the fear zone, you have not moved away from there into asking God the question, what are the learnings for this season? Because it's learning that leads to growth. And whatever cannot stop your growth cannot stop your progress. So, I pray today that the fear of the future and the fear of poverty is broken over your mind in the name of the Lord Jesus. That as you meditate on God's word this season, the hand of God will come upon you. You will receive visions and revelations from God. The Holy Spirit will prompt your heart and mind about what God is planning for you. The fear of poverty will not hold you down. You will not be part of the people who will dishonor the covenant that they have with God just because of what is happening in our world today. I pray grace to continue to be a good steward of God's grace, God's resources, to continue to have the understanding that all that I am, all that I have, they all belong to God. I receive from God. Bible says no man can receive anything except it's given from above. And if you have received, don't behave as if you did not receive. And if you receive, then follow, uh, you know, the biblical word view of a good steward, who is the person who gives to God, who lends to the poor, who, who is blessed to be a blessing, and who manages the resources that God has given him uh, uh, with knowledge and wisdom. Uh, budgeting, you know, paying attention to your obligations and not spending what you don't have. With these, you are able to deal with the spirit of poverty. God himself will look at you and say, well done, you're a good steward. You have been faithful over, over that which is little. More will be given unto you. Remember the parable uh, uh, of the sower. When you, I mean, the parable of talent, sorry. If, when you are faithful in what is little, more is a portion to you. I pray this season. As our world will be overturning and overturning, more will be appointed to you. More will be allocated to you. My God will find you faithful. Saints of Christ Church, I pray uh, that heavens open over you as a church family. I pray wisdom over everyone joining this service today. That the God of heaven will open the windows of heaven over you. There shall be no lack in your life. Your steps are ordered. The favor of God is your portion in the name of Jesus. This season, when men say there's a casting down, you will say there's a lifting up in the precious name of Jesus. Will you bow down your heads with me? I'd love to say a prayer uh, for anyone who may be saying, uh, Pastor, I don't know Jesus is my Lord and personal Savior. Maybe you just you know, strayed into this broadcast or somebody invited you to watch this along with us today. Uh, I want you to know that Christ is coming soon. Christ is coming soon. What is happening in our world right now is one of such signs of the end time. Uh, uh, and you know, when all these things cascade and get to a point, then the scripture says, then the end will come. Uh, it may be soon, it may be, you know, many, many decades or even hundreds of years to come. But the most important thing is that Jesus said, we should always live ready. Are you ready? If Christ comes today, will you be able to go home with him? Or have you said this prayer before, but you know you backslid into sin and you want to rededicate your life to Jesus? I also want to pray for you right now. Uh, if you bow down your heads and just say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. I want to release my life to you. I want to give my life to you. I want to rededicate my life to you. Jesus, I ask that you forgive me my sins. Cleanse me from every unrighteousness. I accept you today as my Lord and my personal Savior. I totally, willingly surrender my life to you. Take my life and let it be your own. I release myself to your spirit to lead, guide, and direct me the remaining days of my life. I declare that I'm born again today. I'm now a child of God in Jesus' precious name. Amen. If you just said a prayer, uh, I want you to go into the comment section of the chat room. Uh, let the church know that you just made a decision today uh, so that they can connect with you and help you uh, to grow and to continue to stand for God.
Uh, again, I want to appreciate everyone who has uh, joined online today to be a part of this service on whatever platform you're watching from. I know God is right with you in your home or wherever you may be right now. I also want to appreciate uh, uh, Pastor Shola and Pastor Sinema Bogunje for uh, having me share the word of God with you today. I believe that this word has profited you and I pray and declare again that there's a lifting up in your life in Jesus' precious name. On behalf of my family, uh, my wife and, and our girls and the entire Elevation Church, uh, I, I want to again say thank you for having me and may God bless you. Amen. Wow. We give God thanks for that message. That was something else. I'm not sure many of us thought about financial stewardship from that point of view, but seriously, we need to fear God more than poverty. Um, you see, who you reverence more will determine the direction your life will go. I know Jesus was very clear when he says we can't serve God and serve mammon at the same time. But you know, the beautiful thing is that when we put our trust in the Lord, he will supply our needs. We will not lack. When we reverence God above poverty, that's almost like saying faith over fear. And so we need to go back and listen to this message. We need to chew on it. Um, you know, one verse of scripture that this message brought to my mind is 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17. Um, in the Amplified Translation, it says, As for the rich in this present world, it says, Instruct them. Now, even though it's referring to the rich, it applies to all of us. It says, instruct them not to be conceited and arrogant, not to set their hope on the uncertainty of riches, but on God, who richly and ceaselessly, that is without fail, provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Hallelujah. We shall put our trust in not on the uncertain riches, but on God who richly and ceaselessly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. You know, next week, um, we're going to take a cue from this and um, we're, going to, uh, we're going to start to talk about how to be led by the Spirit of God for strategic positioning. And we know that every time there has been a famine, God has led his people to the place of supply. Uh, we know of Elijah during the three and a half years farming. God led him to the brook. When the brook was about to dry up, he led him to another place of supply. And so our ears need to be keen at this period of time. We need to learn how to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit so that he can lead us to a place of safety a place of provision so that we can fulfill the purpose for which we are here on earth. And so please don't miss next week, Sunday. Um, it's going to be explosive as we start a new series on how to be led by the Spirit of God. And Pastor Godman's message begins to, to, to give an opening for what we are going to start to talk about. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, well, let's take our tithes and our offerings at this time and let's bring it to God with a heart of gratitude. And so let's bow down our heads at this time and let us pray. Um, Father God, we are so grateful. Um, we know that our past, our present and our future is in your hands. We are grateful, Lord, because you have made provision for us. And at this time, opportunity we come before your throne of grace to honor you with our offering to express our gratitude to you with our tithes and our offerings and we bless you because you have promised to open the windows of heaven and to pour us out of blessing that we will not have enough room to contain it we bless you therefore lord that the lines do fall for us 
in pleasant places. We thank you because you are our shepherd and we lack for no good thing. We're so grateful. We know that needs, our needs are met in Jesus' name. We thank you because we will not suffer when times are bad and in the times of famine, we will be abundantly provided for in the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, we thank you. Hallelujah. Now, in a few minutes, our bank details um, will come on the screen and um, we can make our transfers. And um, please, afterwards, don't log out. Um, I have a few important announcements to make and then we close the service. God bless you. that we are blessed and I and I know that um, we, we, we will not lack during this period of time. You need to believe it. Uh, you know, many times God, Jesus would say, according to your faith, so let it be. So you've got to believe. You've got to put your trust in the things God has said about you. The Bible says the Lord is your shepherd and you shall not lack. You need to believe it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, today's message is going to be on our SoundCloud page. It's going to be on our YouTube, Facebook. Um, so after the service and then the, on our website at www.centofchrist.org. Um, this message and previous messages we have taught in the Saint of Christ Church is available um, on, on these platforms. Uh, particularly, I would want you to listen to this message again and again, and also listen to the fundamentals of faith. Um, by the time you combine these two together, you will be richly blessed. Um, please follow us on our social media uh, pages because punchlines from this message will be hitting social media very soon. Please like, share, and um, please follow us. Um, please let's continue to spread a message of hope and faith to all men and to our friends, our families. And very importantly, at about 11.30, our junior church service is going to start. It will be, um, it will be streamed on YouTube at 11, from 11.30, and it will also be streamed on this platform. Hallelujah. So please let's gather our children together and let's invest in them during this pandemic, let's, let's not allow the pressure to cause us to ignore them. Let's make sure their spirits are also being fed in the name of Jesus. Um, our online prayer meeting takes place on Monday and on Wednesday at 9 p.m. Um, it's on the free conference call application. Um, after just in a few minutes, the instructions will come. I'd like to encourage us to continue to pray. Uh, for those of you that are tired of praying, don't. The Bible says, do not be weary in well-doing, for in due season you will reap if you do not faint. Jesus says, men ought always to pray and not to give up. So tap into the co corporate anointing and join us on Monday at 9 p.m. and on Wednesday at 9 p.m. on the free conference call. Let's just look at the instructions on how you can join. And I'll be back.
Finally, please keep meditating on the Word of God. Take time to pray. Um, this is not the period of time to become spiritually lax. You need to be sound spiritually because it affects your mind, it affects your body, and it helps you to make wise decisions. Uh, please ch check up on each other. Um, reach out to family. Um, let's keep in touch with one another. Um, let's maintain good personal hygiene. Let's use the face mark as the government has said when we go out because the Bible says we should obey those that are in authority. Um, so please, when you do go out, put on a face mask. Um, as Christians, we are obedient. And please exercise. All right, let's share the grace and fellowship. The amazing grace of the Master Jesus Christ, the extravagant love of God, and the intimate friendship of the Holy Spirit be with all of us. We take the closing charge, but thanks be to God who always leads us in victory through Christ. God uses us to spread his knowledge everywhere like a sweet-smelling perfume. Amen.